So now we have a technology, a submicrosphere, that can penetrate into the hair follicle. And we are looking for what is the best active to use. And we look to the literature and we find out, uh, based on our criteria, our criteria is the following. We are looking for natural and safe material, skin safe, available, sustainable material, and materials that have very good basic and clinical data and can be patented, obviously. And what we found is a material from ethyl extract that's called porcyanidine B2. Now, if, if you just stay with me a few more minutes, you understand how it's connected to the mechanism and what is the value of using porcyanidine B2 from Apple based on the basic studies and theories that we have for hair growth. So it's a natural, it's skin friendly, uh, it's available, sustainable, Apple skin uh, is available. What do we know? We know from basic studies that, first of all, it stimulates hair growth. 160% better than the leading brands. And I show you some data. And uh, they have some challenges with this. The number one challenge is its stability. It's not a stable, it's a polyphenol that's easy to get oxidized. That's why it uses, reduces the efficacy. And it has a very limited short life. And it can be patented based on the technology issue. Now, um, what, uh, uh, what, what are the current products? There are current products that are using uh, porcyanidine, but what is porcyanidine technically for you, chemist? So porcyanidine is a flavonoid, okay? It's a dimer of catagen and epicatagen. This is the basic of epicatagen. You see the multiple double bond, which means it's a polyphenol. It's a very strong antioxidant, very strong has multiple benefits, much stronger than vitamin C, for example. And the reference is below. So this is a, a porcyanidine. Where it's coming from? It's coming from the skin and the seeds of certain fruits, like red delicious apple, like a grainy smith apple, and some other sources, okay? But these are the major one, and this is where we get our porcyanidine. Uh, the Japanese group that I mentioned below here found out that when people use the fresh uh, apple extract, they get about 80%, 80% success. 80% of the people saw a benefit. Uh, they did the test also in vitro, and they see in, vi in vitro there is extension of hair regrowth. And they found that the product is safe, so very good conditions. Here are some samples that they shared in the paper, published in the Journal of Cosmetic Dermatology in 2005. You see example of a man before and a year after. Okay, you see the problem, it takes a year to see an improvement. But they found out when they use in vitro, they found a hair growth stimulation. The control was assigned as 100, and when you use minoxidil, which is the official drug, it's only 50% more. But if you use porcyanidine, it's three times more than the control and twice as good as the drug. So two times uh, as minoxidil and three times as the control. Very impressive data. But as I said, practically we have a problem. Now let's focus for a minute. How does it work? How the heck it can boost the hair? So what found out a different scientist in different countries by now is the porcyanidine B2 doesn't block the production of DHT, which is very important. Porcyanidine B2 blocks the production of TGF. You remember the transforming growth factor, okay? So TGF is a protein and it's regulate the destruction of hair follicle. It's the killer. This is the molecule, the killer, okay? And it causes the hair follicle to shrink and eventually fall out. So there are products on the market called TGA Beta, um, available. Um, so what we know, the TGA Beta is a safe material and it's uh, it contributed to reducing hair loss without any negative effect on sexual behavior and capability. So now we know we have an active good data. We have a technology, we combine it. 
and this is Sasphere Natural Hair Growth Promoter. This is the technology that we are offering. In this technology, the core is solid made of the apple extract, and then we have a hydrophilic shell. This is the basic. In order to show you the product, it has to go through rigorous testing. Number one is it's stable because the major issue with the free uh, procyanidin is stability. The second one, does it really targeting? Does it really reach the hair follicle? Okay, and then does it really work? If it reaches the hair follicle, it has to work. So briefly, let me show you the data and try to convince you that this is probably one of the best technology available today. As I said in the beginning, this is a winning solution. This is what you see now. If you take procyanidine 5% and put it in a basic lotion, you get this color oxidized already. However, if you take salsphere, much lighter. It doesn't tend to get oxidized at all. Okay, now, so now we know the stability. The second phase is the penetration. Does it penetrate? So here is a cross section. I explain you the method of how we tested. Um, this is a cross section of the skin. And when we talk about cellular, cellular penetration, we talk about mechanism one. This is one, directly go through the cells into the lower level. Remember the target is the root of the hair. So you see there is a lot of barrier until it gets to the root of the hair. The second mechanism is based on follicular delivery. Can it penetrate through the follicles and now it can get easily, relatively, to the hair follicle. We can do that. In order to prove that it goes through the hair follicle, we can also use the mechanism of clogging, of sealing the hair follicle. Like you see the red spot, we can seal it and see how much penetrates. So this is the penetration study that I share with you in a minute, either it's cellular or not. So the method of analysis is based on this. We use pig skin. Pig skin has big hair follicles. Big, I'm talking about millimeter size. One can see them like this. Now we take the hair, the skin, and we can look at the different layers and separate them. So the first one is the epidermis, which can, we can, through a procedure, separate it from the rest. This is the epidermis. So we can test how much penetrating through the epidermis by itself how much is penetrating through the dermis by itself because it has to get to their follicle and how much will penetrate all together total. How do we do this? We use what's called the French cell. You can see the French cell and in this part we put exactly here where I put the pointer, we put either the epidermis, the dermis or the full and we put the drug on the top and we measure how much is going through and we take samples from this channel. And in this case, we did it with minoxidil, which is a more complicated drug and it's not soluble at all in water. And uh, you can see HPLC, we can take samples and measure how much is penetrating through. And what did we get? So again, the test is like this. You take the skin, you see the skin here. So we block it and we not block it. So we have controls. These are the Francis in the lab in action. You see the French cells, each one of them. You see the red dots here is the clogging, the same red dot that we use here. So everywhere that we can see a follicle, we clog it. Okay, this is the test of clogging and see if there is penetration. So we are looking at penetration of minoxidil and what do we see? We compare the same level of minoxidil, sounds fair and free. So the epidermis penetration, we see very high penetration of sounds fair very low penetration of the minoxidil by itself. Dermis, both of them are low, but the sun sphere has a better penetration. Total, if you take the total, as I showed you before, we see significant penetration from sun sphere and very limited penetration of minoxidil free. So this already tells you that most of the penetration is happening through the epidermis. Now, is, does it go through the follicle or not? So here is the minoxidil penetration. Closed follicles, almost zero, almost zero. Full coverage, cover the whole surface, almost zero. But open the follicles, you see tremendous amount of cell sphere that can penetrate in and through the follicles into the hair follicle. So this is tremendous results. 
Now, we took the essence sphere with a fluorescent agent, and you can see here a, a picture taken with a, a, a laser microscopy and taken from the top, and look at what's happening. So in the beginning, you can see how uh, the particles penetrating into the hair follicles, and I show you this in a minute with the a fluorescent agent and they can penetrate into the hair follicle, then the particle will dissolve, and now the material can penetrate and reach into the deeper layer of the skin where they are needed the most. Remember, the stem cells are here, and we want to get here with everything that we have. Now, when we look under the microscope, uh, here it is a diagram of where we are. You see, as we go deeper, you see the red is concentrated, indicating that the material is penetrating through the follicles into the deeper layer. I wish I would have more time to go back to explain it again, but uh, this is just to prove you that we have a penetration, we have a follicular penetration, and overall Southfield Natural Hair Growth Promoter is uh, formulated um, now with 10% in the base, and this is what we run through a clinical study. Clinical study was done in China, and uh, we used uh, about 50 volunteers at the age of 26 to 65. 70% of them were men, 30% were women. So it was a lotion, 10% of uh, natural hair growth promoted. And they use one ml twice a day. And here is what you can see, and you judge by yourself. Uh, this is before, and this is 38 days later, 55 years old men who use the whole amount within 38 days, and you can see the effect. Here are more pictures, and of course I cannot show you all the 50 pictures, but just a couple. Uh, here you see before and after 57 days. This is of a man 55 years old. You may not very get very much impressed with this picture, but look at the rest. We show you a variety. Uh, this is before. This is 150 days later, 53 uh, years old, and you see the hair wig wall. Not only that the wig wall, but it's also black, so it's coming back to the natural color. Uh, more picture to come. Here was a 65 years old. Uh, this is you see from May 20 to October 28. So um, it's about 153 days. You see a significant event, a uh, significant improvement. This is another picture of a man 60 years old. And uh, within one month, you see that the new hair is actually black color. So this is working, rejuvenating the hair. Uh, we can, of course, show you more and more and more and more. 31 years old, up to 30 days. So the bottom line is, I'm a little bit uh, rushed because I'm over, I'm over time here. Uh, what do we learn? The clinical summary, the clinical study summary is that 80% of the volunteers were very satisfied with the results in terms of they could see wig of hair and, um, and even black hair coming up, yeah? And 100% of the people found that the product is safe. They didn't have any inflammation, itchy, or any effect because there is no alcohol at all. 80% um, of the volunteers with white hair found that the wig wall is black hair, which means it's rejuvenating the hair um, totally. So uh, the material works pretty fast. People could see effect even within one month. The effect was much more pronounced um, with the um, age of higher than 45. So the older you are, the better the pronunciation is, of course. And we also found that um, dose of 160 ml is sufficient for one month. So this was an overall uh, study, and we recommend to use the technology with 10%. Then we found out that we may use a little bit less, like 5% of natural growth promoter and get almost similar product. So this is South Sphere Natural Hair Growth Promoter. It's a technology-based product. It's uh, enabled to use a stabilized form of ethyl extract, porcyanidin B. It's less colorful. It's enhanced the bioavailability. It penetrates deeper into the hair follicle. 
And we also know that it actually works. And the mechanism for this is it stimulates the production of anagen. Anagen is the active form. So the active phase of the hair staying for longer. And this is how it's promote hair growth. So it's a solution that effectively can combat hair loss in both men and women. It doesn't have to relate to the different uh, gender. And it's 100% natural, therefore we think it's safe and we know it's safe from the testing we have done. So um, I think I summarized to you what is the technology, where it's coming from and why it's better than any other technology that's available today. It has nothing to do with affecting the sex hormones or any other uh, biological process that um, could interfere with our life. Uh, it's a safe technology, it's a natural, and it's very easy to use because it's water-based. Uh, you can use it with shampoos if you want, you can use it with rinse of conditioners, with leave-on conditioners, serums, um, toning, and so on. Typically added at the end, and we will give you some uh, more information in the future about how to use it.